Hi there, this is my OCRA, and that is OCRA, not OCRB, sorry, uh, A-Level Chemistry 2025 Paper 1 predictions for this year. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is just basically what we can expect in this year's Paper 1 for OCRA. Now, as always, disclaimer, um, what I cover in this video is, first of all, just things you should always be revising because they are year on year. Um, very important topics in terms of the numbers of marks. Then I look in a little bit more detail about some things that I think maybe either um, are more worth marks or perhaps because students neglect them in their revision. So my other advice, and then we'll look at things that looking at the trends in the last five years of papers, um, what's likely, more likely to come up just based on what's been up before. As always, please make sure your revision is as thorough as it can be. And at the end, I will give you some more pointers towards some useful revision resources as well. So um, always, always, always make sure that you're revising these well. So bonding and structure and periodic trends. It may well be that you don't necessarily see these as much in the structure questions, but in the multiple choice, there will be lots of marks available for these and, of course, calculations. So these are sort of the real foundations of chemistry. The paper one is covering your inorganic and physical. So you're going to have a lot of mole calculations, um, a lot of periodic trends, and you need to know your bonding and structure. You need to get confident on your normal mole calculations um, before you can tackle the other ones that come up, which, of course, is KC and KP. And make sure that you are mixing this up and doing questions from a range of different sources. Because one thing I do see students do is they're like, right, I'm going to do my moles. I'm going to learn titrations. I'm going to learn ideal gas. Uh, now I'm going to learn KC. And now I'm going to learn KP. But in a real exam paper, these questions can often be linked together. So you could have an ideal gas question that is linked to KP. Or you could have a titration that is used to find a value for KC. So make sure that you don't put these topics too much in little piles and go, right, I'm only going to do one thing at a time. Transition metal reactions. Again, this is a huge area for paper one, your inorganic. Make sure that you also know your analysis. So linking the reactions of those transition metals to the tests for ions. That's the tests for anions as well. So your sulfate, your different halide ions, and also your carbonate. But within that, inorganic analysis can be qualitative, testing for ions, but also very often mixed into quantitative, i.e. working out empirical formulae. Working out waters of crystallization is a common theme. Often a long titration question five, six or more marks based on a unstructured calculation, get lots of practice at those. And then other things that I think more based just for this year, 2025, I do think that Casey and particularly maybe Le Chatelier's principle describing um, what happens to the position of equilibrium, make sure that you can do the written stuff and not just the calculations for equilibria. Enthalpy change definitions, so these go across year one and year two of the A level. So make sure that you don't lose silly marks on things like enthalpy change of formation. Enthalpy change of combustion is not so common because it's more linked to organic chemistry. But certainly enthalpy change of formation, lattice enthalpy, enthalpy of solution, make sure that you're confident with those definitions and with being able to do the relevant equations, not just doing the calculation from a born harbour cycle, but actually being able to link it to the individual processes. Electrochemical cells. So I think certainly definitely making sure that you can do your predictions based on redox and whether things are going to be feasible or not, as in whether or not like something can oxidise something else, identifying oxidising and reducing agents. Transition metals, it's always difficult to know which one they're going to pick every year. 
I'm thinking chromium and copper are both quite likely candidates for bigger questions involving their reactions. But please do try and cover all the transition metals as much as you can. Strong and weak acids, I think perhaps that there is some scope there for comparison questions um, related to pH calculations, related to the degree of dissociation, but also to mixtures. So make sure that you can calculate the pH, for example, of weak acids when you add an alkali. And then titrations, as I said, is always a common theme. I do think it's likely there'll be an iodine thiosulfate titration this year. Whether that's in paper one or paper three is difficult to gauge. So just a few things about some resources on my website, um, because some, many of these resources are free. They might be hard to find. If they're hard to find, just email me or drop me a comment in the um, video and I will just send you a link. So if you see one of these things, you think, I don't know where that is. It's always my aim to do my website better, um, but I end up teaching chemistry instead and I don't get on with it. So retrieval practice quizzes, these are just little quick 10 mark quizzes to help you keep on top of your revision all the way through. Practice questions and walkthroughs. So I've got booklets on things like bonding and structure, calculations, redox, energy changes. All of these are helpful for paper one and they usually have walkthrough videos. Those are free as well all in the A-level resources section. I've got a free download section that includes a set of 50 multiple choice questions. I mean, you need your multiple choice practice for paper one, and they have video walkthroughs and explanations. In half term, so next week, next Thursday, the 29th, I've got a full one day intensive revision course, which is six hours of really kind of, I, would, I don't want to say cramming because that's not good. It's not cramming because it's quite a way before the exam, but intensive and small groups. So those places are limited and get in touch with me straight away. Get on a website if you want to book that because it's a really good opportunity to ask lots of questions and focus on what you want to focus on for all three papers, obviously, not just for paper one. Um, if you sign up to that course, you will automatically get access to my masterclass revision packages. Now, that's only five pound a month anyway. So if you just wanted to go over some topic videos, like, for example, you're thinking, I really need to go over transition metals. I really need to go over Born Harbor cycles or uh, Hess cycles, or I really need to go over some calculations. I don't think enough people realize that for five pounds per month, you can get access to 23 different topic videos and what they are is what I call exam masterclasses. So you get a set of questions to help re you revise. They should be sort of fairly cover everything practice questions. Then you get an hour long video, which is group recorded class, looking at specifics about challenging questions, exam technique, common student errors. So you can really get in some detail because it's now less than one month until the last exam paper, five pound will get you the whole lot. Um, basically giving it away. Um, 35 pound will get you onto my pre-exam group classes. So four hours worth, and these are live classes that I do two days before. I don't do them the night before because that is a bit too close to the deadline. And then if you find something that you need to go over, you don't have the time. So two days before pre-exam group classes, there is a 90 minute class for paper one, 90 minute class for paper two, and a one hour class for paper three. If you only wanna see the recordings and you're not bothered about being in a live class and being able to interact and ask questions and kind of, I do recommend live classes because it really actually prods you to work a bit, that little bit harder. If you just wanna access the recordings, it's 25 pounds to access this year's exam classes and the May half term intensive. Pretty bargain. Um, if Oh, and if you sign up to the May half term course, you also get the 2025 predicted papers. So there's a lot going on there. Um, and if you're confused, just drop me a question in the comment. And I'll, again, I'll just drop you a link to what it is that you're interested in. Practice papers and predicted papers. So 
last year's predicted papers are available in the masterclass revision package with walkthroughs so that's something else that you're getting for your five pounds you're getting a whole calculations course for your five pounds as well um, and all of that is included in any class that you purchase I've also got an extended response booklet and I've forgotten to put it in there but also a book of just calculation questions so lots and lots of those things that I was mentioning like the titration practice questions all of those are in there as well so ask me questions if you've got any in the comments if you've done paper one come back and tell me what was in it because it's really helpful for my paper three prediction which I don't do until after paper one and paper two have gone come out so that I have an idea of what came up in paper one